Good evening. My fellow kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. As prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Many of you have come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as... Up to tonight, I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. But as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit! If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind, and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Your sire, tragic, my apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must... must adhere to if we wish to survive. When someone, anyone, breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So... What I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't come back until you do. Good evening. Scene, man. Hooey. <laughs> then they just plop you out here like a naked baby in the woods. <laughs> How about that? Ah, look, you know, it's probably a lot for you to take in, so uh, why don't you let me show you the ropes? What do you say? I'm Jack. What's important is I'm offering help. You make it back from Santa Monica with your hide and we'll trade life stories, okay? Till then, I got about this much time. You in or out? Don't worry, kiddo. You'll adjust. I'd love to explain it all, but time's a-wasting. You want some help or what? 
All right. Uh, why don't we, uh, step out back here? Rice, it's stuffy in there, huh? This is much better. Now, we ain't got much time, but I figure somebody should fill you in on the bare bones stuff at least. You know, could save your hide. You look wobbly. You even had a drink yet? Oh, man, we're popping a cherry here. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, you're gonna love this. All right, check it out. Blood? It's your new rack of lamb, your new champagne, blood, your new fucking heroin, kid. <laughs> Get ready, though, because, hey, it's never as sweet as the first time. Well, down around the corner there, I saw this human. Poor SOB can't find his car. <laughs> All right. You go down there, casual like. You creep up on him. You bear those little fangs and feed. Don't worry if you weren't captain of the wrestling team or something, because it'll come so naturally you think you've done it a thousand times already. <laughs> Forget that comic book crap, kid. It don't work that way. Now go for it. Be sure, though, and this is important, so listen up. Be sure not to drain them dry, okay? It might be hard to resist, but don't kill them. Yeah, whenever you're done, sweet cheeks, we can move this show along. I'll be right here. Go on. I'll be right here.
you're feeling it. I can see it in your eyes. You're a born-again predator. Feeling that blood bubbling inside you, lifting you up. That's it, kid. That's what it's all about right there. All right, now. You got the blood, you're feeling all kick-ass, feeling better than your best day living, but wait, it gets better. All kindred, kindred, that's a our word for vampire, all kindred have a few things in common. Things that set them right square above humans on the food chain. Like sharper senses, a body that can take a beating, and if you play your cards right, eternal life. That's no sure bet, but still, a chance at immortality is not a bad deal. And that's just for starters. French benefits for joining the club. Well, you can still be destroyed, but forget the books and the movies. Garlic, it's worthless. A cross? Pfft, shove it right up their ass. <laughs> a steak? Only if it catches you in the heart, and then it just paralyzes you. Running water? Eh, that's no problem. I bathe. Occasionally. Now, a shotgun blast to the head. Oh, that's trouble, boy. Fire? That's real trouble. Sunlight? Well, you catch a sunrise and it's all over, kiddo. Get it? Okay, now. What the fuck is this? Look, if you get inside here and head upstairs, we meet up in the room. i see what the ruckus is.
down here. Stay away from the windows. Oh, it's a Sabat raid. The Sabat, they're, uh... Ah, Christ, I was hoping to spare you this shit till later. Uh, the Sabat, well... They're mostly mindless, bloodthirsty assholes. That's all you need to know for now, all right? The Sabbat got wind of the gathering here, so they figured they'd raise a little hell and put a little heat on the new prince. No time for political rundown. Job one, get out of here alive. Sabbat might be mindless, but they hit like a Mack truck, like raging savages. Nothing a fledgling like you wants to mess with. Shh, shh. Heads up. Back away. Sabat bastards. All right, we gotta have a moose out the back quick. I'll stay and keep a watch out. You get us into the office. The door's around the corner here. Shortcut. Well, nicely done, though. Not exactly an angel in life, were you? Cool. Now, if you want a lesson on how really not to act, take notes from those sabbat assholes. You're a big bad vampire. Yeah, great, congrats. Now keep it to yourself. You go roar, you beat your chest, and that's what you can expect. It's the same reason you don't let humans see you feeding. It's why the wolf doesn't want the sheep to know he's there. It's also why you don't go juggling dumpsters or outrun the 815 from Sacramento. And it's, and it's why you didn't know any of this when you woke up this morning. Keep our secret secret and you make things easier on all of us. We're living in the age of cell phone cameras. Fuck ups ain't tolerated. Makes sense enough, right? Well. It ain't a casual thing for a fledgling like you. That party back there with the guy in the suit and the Magilla Gorilla? The assholes that put your sire to death? That's the Camarilla. Oof. They make a tidy business out of enforcing vampire laws like this one. Mm, yeah, I'll tell you what I think some other time, maybe. I like to let people form their own opinions. All right, now don't worry, because I know the area a little. And you know what? I'm glad we're in this situation, you and I. It illustrates a point. You gotta utilize your surroundings. You do what you gotta do. Theft, destruction of property, breaking and entering. <laughs> These will be the least of your sins before the night's out. So look around here. You gotta get out the back there through that magnetically sealed door. Must be a key someplace.
There we go. Now take that key card and head out the back. I'll meet you out in the alley there. I'm gonna check out things from topside. Fucking waste of unlife, these Sabbat Vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey! Look at them potholes! Those will close up soon enough. Better feed, though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. It's not the freshest catch, but he'll do. Well, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Bums and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Ooh, that's good stuff. Remember what I said, though. Don't kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. An innocent's an innocent. You kill one, even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's gonna cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. The beast, it's always there, waiting to take over. When it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive, and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12 gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> the only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. All right, now go feed. Careful, though. He's gonna drain fast. Good, huh? Yeah, you can do worse. There's some rats down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive feeding on animals if you can stomach that kind of thing. Ugh. Well, give it a try.
<laughs> you rat sucker. <laughs> hey, I don't care what you do, but just so you know, polite vampire society looks down on that kind of thing. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. The building across from us with the garage door? There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. Go on ahead, just keep it down.
Quiet, they're inside here. Seems that shovelhead outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry, he's probably greener than you. The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. He's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that, make shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. He is a vampire, so be ready. Go get him. That sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Saban are going all out. You better head underground, avoid straight bullets. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. Not sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. I'm gonna keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them holed up.
need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. Come to an elevator around the way. Meet you there. Don't let them catch you. Gangbangers protecting their turf. Oh man, I'm here thinking it's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals about to take one for the hood. Yeah, they probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots in it will take down a human. Well, I'm gonna want it back, so don't go die and lose it. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy, practically useless against vampires, but still. A kindred's got to keep up with the times. And in modern-day Los Angeles, that means coming strapped. Well, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns. Ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm gonna make sure there's no stragglers around outside. <laughs>
That's it, kiddo. Just like that, and it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. Until the next night, when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back, parry, dodge, spin and all that, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, to be honest, you came at a, well, an interesting time, let's say. The Camarilla, the Sabbat. Now, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred had stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. Oh, boy. I think they're looking for you outside. Guess you got a cab to catch. Was hoping to fill you in on a little bit more, but... Nah, hell, you'll figure it all out. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's this bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> now that's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> Good luck. Hello, L.A. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable. I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to The Deb of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and you first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Well, looks like the boards are lighting up. Aren't I the popular one? Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who will be the lucky caller? You've got the first shot at Deb tonight. So, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Hi, Deb. This is, uh, Vigo. Vigo? So, Vigo, why are you up so late? Um, I'm working a late shift here at the uh, Yacht Club. Uh-huh. How many boats do you own, Vigo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, bought them in Italy. Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Um, yes. Arrivederci, Vigo. Caller two, you're on the Deb of Night. Be gentle. I Deb. Hello, caller. I Deb. Is tonight a rerun? Deb. Caller number three, what's keeping you up tonight? Deb, listen to me, Deb. They're at it again and people have got to know. They've got to know because they don't know. They won't report the stuff on the news because they own the news. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Conspiracy? This goes beyond conspiracy, okay? There's no word for something as devious and secret as this, you understand? The people need to hear this. They need to know the real story. 
You've got our undivided attention. All right. As we all know, the Americans established a moon base back in the late 70s. That's no secret. But what most people don't know is that they have been conducting a dig. Not for resources, but for artifacts. I see. Well, it's no coincidence that the Chinese have started conducting space missions. You know why? I'll tell you why. The reason is because the Chinese are trying to stop the Americans from finding an ancient space probe sent by the Beta Centaurians. And why? Because the Beta Centaurians are giving space technology to the Chinese to get back at the Andromedans, a.k.a. the Greys, for giving space technology to the Americans in the 50s. Fascinating. The American government's been putting more money into space. Don't you see what's happening? I can't believe I'm the only one that's figured it out. Am I the only person alive that can see what's going on? It's because the Andromedans and the Betas are going to be fighting their war in this galaxy through us, Deb. And the American people, the people of Earth, you people, cannot let this happen. It's Moo versus Atlantis all over again. Thank you, Gomez. And that concludes the news portion of the show. Well, this girl's got to pay her bill, so it's time for a few commercials. But don't go anywhere. I'm just getting warmed up. Should I say... Friggin' Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin' Chicken and the other leading chicken flavored products. Let's listen for which one they prefer. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Oh, oh my gosh! Is that what we call fish? Now, try this. Oh, this is some good f chicken. What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure. Um, oh, God. Seriously, God, these up your ass. Here. Try this one. Mm. Hey, mm. mother f***ing great chicken right there. What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy f***. <laughs> That's good. What the f*** is this sh Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Because that's some good f***ing chicken. I mean, friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken, you'll swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie, and the talking pig, and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally nude object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent whittler down on his luck. And ten makes one hundred. Here's your money, ma'am. Ma'am, I happen to have a granular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She was like everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm gonna have to make a deposit. Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 on the DMC. Say goodbye to yellow teeth and spots in your dirty dishes. It's incredible. Look at that shine. Your smile or these dinner plates. Harnessing the secrets of ancient Egypt, now there's a dishwashing detergent so powerful it doesn't just leave your dishes spotless, it actually whitens your teeth. Patented time release spirit toys from you caked on food and grease and remain on the plate to be absorbed into your food to clean your teeth while you eat. Desitron, the dishwashing detergent of the future for cleaner plates and whiter teeth. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond's bus sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in this area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redmond to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Bowen, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Redmond has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. A few hours ago, the ship was spotted around midnight by fishermen who contacted the Coast Guard after their attempts to hail the ship proved futile. Coast Guard officials are releasing very little information right now, but have identified the vessel as the Elizabeth Dane. No word as of yet as to the whereabouts of the crew, though the Coast Guard are asking any ships that had contact with the Elizabeth Dane to assist them in their search. We'll have more on this story as it breaks. A massive gelatinous creature that washed up on the beaches of Providence, Rhode Island, has scientists scratching their heads. Found by a jogger early on Tuesday morning who says he smelled it a mile away, the mystery creature is thought to be some form of giant octopus. Though marine biologists that have examined the monster have commented that they have never seen anything like it in the cephalopod family before. They speculate that it could be from a yet undiscovered family of sea creatures. In other news, an apparent third victim of the Southland slasher has prompted the closing of the Santa Monica Pier, where the body was found earlier tonight. 
Investigators say the scene closely mirrors those of slayings in Glendale and Long Beach. In both cases, the bodies of the victims were described as torn apart, though details are being withheld from the public at this time. Police urge anyone with information relating to this case to contact them. Actor Ash Rivers is lucky to be alive after his car crashed into the gate at Parasite Studios earlier tonight. Witnesses say that they were shocked when the negative zero star emerged unscathed and apparently unfazed by his high-speed accident. Rivers' agent released a statement stating that Rivers' crash was due to a mechanical problem and that the studio is not pursuing legal action against Rivers for the trademark gate's destruction. Miraculously, this is the second crash Rivers has escaped unharmed in the last year. Our top story tonight, a derelict ship found floating 10 miles off the Los Angeles. Thank you. 